good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Let's begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, so govern our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that ever mindful of your glorious return, we may persevere in both faith and holiness of living. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You want to take the OT? Sure. The Old Testament lesson for the last Sunday in the church here is Isaiah 51, verses 4 through 6. Give attention to me, my people, and give ear to me, my nation, for a law will go out from me, and I will set my justice for a light to the peoples. My righteousness draws near. My salvation has gone out, and my arms will judge the peoples. The coastlands hope for me, and for, for my arm they wait. Lift up your eyes to the heavens and look at the earth beneath, for the heavens vanish like smoke, and the earth will wear out like a garment, and they who dwell in it will die in like manner. But my salvation will be forever, and my righteousness will never be dismayed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The epistles from Jude 20 through 25. But you, beloved, build yourselves up in your most holy faith. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourselves in the love of God, waiting for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ that leads to eternal life. And have mercy on those who doubt. Save others by snatching them out of the fire. To others show mercy with fear, hating even the garments stained by the flesh. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you blameless before the presence of his glory with great joy. To the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time and now and forever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the gospel lesson is from Mark 13, 24 to 37. Jesus said in those days after that tribulation, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light and the stars will be falling from heaven and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. And then they will see the son of man coming in clouds with great power and glory. And then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts out its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near, at the very gates. Truly, I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But concerning that day or that hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Be on guard, keep awake, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his servants in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to stay awake. Therefore stay awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening or at midnight, or when the cock crows, or in the morning, lest he comes suddenly and find you asleep. And what I say to you, I say to all, stay awake. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Well, the way I'm going this weekend for the sermon is, my title is, uh, Something to Look Forward to. And it's based on the gospel lesson. And, and as you heard all of that, you might think, well, that doesn't sound like something to look forward to. Um, a lot of bad things happening. And typically you think about we don't look forward to the end of our lives or um, because we, we have a fear of that, right? But think about it this way. Uh, what are you looking forward to today? Maybe you're looking forward to Thanksgiving with the family coming home. Or maybe you're looking forward to a new job. Or looking forward to going on vacation. Well, our Lord says we can look forward to his coming again in glory. And we can look forward even to our death because he's overcome death and his, his death and resurrection. And I pick up on the... the uh, intro for the day, which is from the Apostle Peter. And he actually says, we're looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth, the home of righteousness. We can look forward to this new heaven and new earth because God in Christ has made it the home of righteousness. Everything is right there. There's nothing wrong. There's no difficulties between people. There's um, no sin. There's life as he created and redeemed it to be. So because we know the end of the story, 
been told by the one who has been here, done that, and opened the kingdom of heaven to us, we can look forward to the end of our lives and also the end of the world when our Lord comes again in glory, because it will be a day of great joy, of an unending joy of life together with, with God and one another. Sometimes though, I think we think about what leads up to that and it doesn't sound very appealing with when Jesus talks about uh, uh, what's going to happen before he comes again in glory. Maybe sometimes too, we think about well, what's gonna happen before I die. I'm okay with the death part, but what about that part that leads up to it? And Jesus says something kind of curious at first, if you think about it, that um, he says this generation uh, will not pass away until all of these things take place. And then he talks about how you need to stay awake. And he talks about the, um, that you must be, be ready because you don't know when he's going to come, you know, uh, whether it be uh, in the evening or at midnight or when the cock crows in the morning. And I think about just right after this, Jesus goes to the uh, Garden of Gethsemane. Remember how he tells his disciples to stay awake, to pray with him? And what do they do? They fall asleep. And then I think, too, what does Peter do when the rooster crows, right? He, he's reminded that he has just denied the Lord, you know, three times, right? He's, he's denied even knowing him. He wasn't ready yet, but our, our Lord gets them ready. And then you think about the signs of the end, you know, the earth will quake, right? The, but that happens when Jesus dies. He, mm -hmm. he wins the victory over sin and death and all of that, opening the kingdom of God to the disciples, to you, to me, and, and to all of us, so that we truly can uh, be ready uh, and awake and look forward to when our Lord comes again in glory. I don't know if you want to pick mm -hmm. up anything on that. Sure. The, uh, the collect of the day, um, we pray that well, first of all, that we be mindful of his glorious return and that we may persevere in both faith and holiness of living. And I think sometimes the reason why we fear those end days or fear our death is that we don't feel like we are we're prepared or we're ready. And we put the, the emphasis or the emphasis on, on us instead of on God. And I think that's where that Jude reading really comes in. It's a short book. It's only 25 verses. And um, one of our former presidents of the Synod used to quote this verse all the time, mm -hmm. Dr. Al Berry. Um, it was his signature, and it's the, it, it starts in verse um, 24. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you blameless before the presence of his glory with great joy, to the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, authority before all time, both now and forever. So it is God who makes us able to endure to the end. Um, he is the last man standing, and we are in him, and he in his us in that holy communion, that, that mystical body we call the church. So he makes us able to stand. And so on that last day, we can say, I'm with Jesus. Uh, he paid the price. He did all of these works for me. Or as we hear in that chapter of Matthew, Lord, when did I, when did I do these things? Mm -hmm. um, is that the Lord is making us able to stand before him in glory and righteousness. And he keeps and coming to make us to ready. Right? He, he right. keeps coming now to make us ready by his, with his word and with his sacrament. Mm -hmm. and, and sometimes we, we don't realize we're ready, but we, we are because Christ is in us and we're in Christ and, and we can look forward to, to his coming. I think about ready or not, here I come. Remember yeah. when we used to play that, that child's game, but he, he comes and we are ready, even if maybe we don't think we are, but it's because of what he's done. You hit on that really well. Yeah. Yeah, I look at what Jesus says about, you know, the last times coming and all the bad things that are gonna happen. It's gonna be, you know, a day of wrath and it's gonna be a day of judgment. Um, you know, separating the sheep, the sheep, the sheep from the goats. <laughs> um, and so there is a scary element and I always appreciate how you pastors are, are ta you know, talking about, you know, uh, what Christ has promised to those who believe. It's, it's great to keep that as a focus. Thinking on the flip side, I think sometimes people aren't scared enough about the last day. Um, they don't think about it. They're like, oh, I was baptized, you know, a long time ago. Things are good. I don't have to come to church if I come to church once a month 
that's fine. Maybe once every couple months. I'm, I'm saved. It's all good. Um, one and so, foot in, one foot out. Yeah. So there's this feeling of complacency. And Jesus is very direct and stark about the last days that um, there is going to be judgment. Mm -hmm. And I think there should be a little bit of scaredness in us that, uh, yes, we do need to be awake. We don't need to become so complacent that we that we fall asleep, that we ignore him, that we feel like everything's all good. I don't need to um, come to communion. I don't need to remember my baptism. Um, if I pray when things get bad once in a while, that's good enough. So I, I think that scared, you know, the, the idea of fearing the Lord is an ultimate respect, but there's also an element of fear sure. when you say fear the Lord. So I don't know. What do you, what do you guys think about when, that? In the lectionary, sometimes we talk about, oh, we got to preach about this again, you know, and, and even it's set up in the, in the lectionary to show, look, we need to be ready. Mm -hmm. We need, we need, we need God in Christ. We need the things eternal, not the things that are just Instagram ish, if you will. Mm -hmm. We need things that are going to last. And so that kind of hits over and over again. And I think hymnody does that too. When we sing the hymns, um, and like. yeah, I think that uh, I, I agree with you, Sam, that that this here is really a rehearsal. What we do in the divine service is a rehearsal so that we're ready when the game day comes, so to mm. speak. Right. Mm. And, and if you're not rehearsing, if you're not um, learning those words by heart, you're not prepared uh, to face your maker. Right. Um, so there is an element of, of, of fear. Um, but ultimately, he is the one um, that enables us, that puts the spirit within us through his word and uh, through sacraments. Um, so I think there's a both and here going on, right? And he wants to turn us away from our trust in ourselves to trust in him. And all sorts of things do that, whether it be in our everyday lives when things don't go well, when suffering comes, right. and when God allows us to even suffer. and and to recognize that you can't trust yourself. You need to trust in him. And I think John yeah. Kleine talks a little bit about this in his book, Grace Upon Grace. He talks about our, our life is kind of like a demolition. Our, you know, our, our, our bodies that this demolition is going on so that at, until the end, everything is stripped away from us. And at the end, we're just beggars. And, and that God, uh, God fills, uh, uh, fills our, our sacks, our empty sacks with his grace and his gifts so that things are taken away from us so that we can depend totally on him. You, you know what I'm getting at here? Yeah, yeah. When, when we go and visit Shedden's, yeah. we see that. And, you know, there's a longing for the new life in Christ, a longing to go home, to be in the home of righteousness. Right. One of my favorite visits one time is I was called out in, late at night and the woman said, Pastor, would you pray that God take me home? I want to go home. And, it, and you get... And there are those who get to a point where it's, I, I want I want to go home. I want to leave this world. And we see people who even try and, okay, I'm going to die. I want to die. <laughs> <laughs> and it doesn't work that way. But she, I said the prayer, and I thought it was a pretty good prayer. She took, she took my collar, pulled me close, and she said, you tell them. You tell them now. I'm like, well, <laughs> it was the next morning. But, um, but it was a, a faithful prayer. Come, Lord Jesus, take me home. I'm ready to go home. I want to be with you with all of those who have gone before us. I want to be with Jesus. So you see that when the world kind of hits and shows you for what it's, for what it is. Mm -hmm. And often we live in a la-la land where we don't deal with the realities. Mm -hmm. In the church, we deal with the realities of our sin, death, that they've been overcome in his suffering, death, resurrection. We should sing about this, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah the hymn of the day for Sunday is, Lo, he comes with clouds descending, uh, painting a picture of, of the last day, uh, it talks about um, those who reject Christ will see him as he is and they'll realize that he is the Messiah um, and they'll realize that they were the ones who rejected him. Uh, but those who are believers will see him as he is and realize that there are the nail marks in his hands and uh, this is Jesus who died, who died for us. It, it's just this wonderful picture through four verses. Um, maybe let's just sing the first uh, the first verse. Mm -hmm. the, okay. Sure. Okay. Lord, he comes with clouds descending once for every sinner. 
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen. Thank you.